I'm the DBX guy and I'm here to show you how fast and easy it is to use the drive rack PA. So the first step of course is to take your drive rack PA out of the box and plug the power cord in. Plug the left and right out of your mixing console into the left and right inputs of the unit. Connect the outputs of your drive rack PA to your high mid low amplifiers. Turn on your mixing console, turn the master faders down, turn on your drive rack PA. Turn the amplifiers on when the left channel's all the way down. So every set of speakers and amplifiers are going to require a unique set of tunings. By running the setup wizard, we're going to tell the drive rack PA what speakers and amplifiers are plugged into it, and it will then configure itself to match those. So start by pushing the setup wizard button. Turn the data wheel to select dual mono or stereo. This will link or unlink the graphic EQs on the inputs. Once you've done that, push the next page button. Using the data wheel, select what speaker type and model you're using for your top boxes. Press the next page button. With the data wheel once again, spin it to select which subwoofer you're using and if you're using mono or stereo subs. Push the next page button. Using the data wheel, select which amplifier type you have on which band. Select your high amplifier, then press next page. Use the data wheel to select your mid-range amplifier, next page, and then the same again for the subwoofers. Push the next page button. Use the data wheel to turn the virtual knob to where you have the volume knob set on your amplifiers, or set the knobs on your amplifiers to match those displayed on the screen. Push the next page button. Turn the data wheel to select your mid-speaker amplifier type and model. Push the next page button. Turn the data wheel to select the amplifier and model type you're using on your subs. Press the next page button. Now set the drive rack PA to match how your amplifiers are set, whether they're in bridge mode or not. Push the next page button. Next, press the data wheel to load the preset you've just created. Your new program is now loaded to match your speaker and amplifier type and configuration. Push the next page button. So every room has different acoustical properties and in order to correct for that we're going to need to use some EQ. In order to do that we're going to run the auto EQ wizard which is automatically going to set the EQ curve of our drive rack PA. Connect the included measurement mic into the jack on the front panel. Press the RTA mic input button just to the right of the microphone input. Turn the data wheel to select a frequency response for the auto EQ. For example, select response C, my personal favorite, then press the next page button to continue. Now place the RTA microphone between your two speakers. It works best when it's about 25 feet back. Press the next page button. The auto EQ will go through some audible changes as it tunes your speakers to the room. This may take a few minutes. Auto EQ will complete or finish sending pink noise once it has come as close as possible to matching the frequency response of your speakers to the EQ curve you selected earlier. Press the RTA input button to release the auto EQ and continue on. So now that we've tuned our system for the room, it's time to ring it out so it doesn't feed back on us. For that, we're going to run the drive rack PA's auto feedback suppression wizard. Now the AFS wizard will begin. Press the next page button. Then press the next page button. 
Turn the data wheel to choose the number of fixed filters, or Fs, to use with the advanced feedback suppression, AFS. These filters, once populated, or fixed, will stay at the same frequency and level for the entire show. Live filters, designated by the L, will float as needed during the performance. Then press the Next Page button. Turn the data wheel to choose the EQ notch filter width appropriate for your needs. Speech is a wide filter, music low a narrow filter, music medium even narrower, and music high is a super ultra narrow filter. The wider the filter, the faster it will catch the feedback, but the narrower the filter, the less destructive it will be to the sonic quality of your mix. Then press the next page button. With the channel faders down, set the mixer's master level to zero. With the microphones you'll be using during the performance in place and connected, turn up the microphone channel levels until feedback begins. The AFS will start to populate the advanced feedback suppression filters. Do not talk into any of the microphones or play music. This is only a search for feedback at this point. Slowly increase the channel gain on your mixer to the desired level. Advanced feedback suppression has completed when fixed filter setup done in live mode appears on the display. Then press the next page button. So now we've run all the setup wizards and we're ready to go, but there's a couple of tricks I wanted to share with you about how we can get even better performance from our drive rack PA. Moving the microphone out of the center on the auto EQ section and even putting it on the floor off to one side in front of one stack of speakers instead of in the center of both gets better results. So that concludes our look at the drive rack PA. Everything you need to make your speakers and amplifiers sound great.